I can't see you show up the football. Dog talks. Okay, I am wearing two microphones today. So we have a hell of a lot of construction going on next door, which is great for us because I'm going to jump out there. I'm going to hang out on the porch and we're going to test the low cut filters of each of these microphones. But before we do, I want to get into what we're talking about today. This first one is something I was so excited about. I bought it as soon as the pre-order was announced through B&H. So I've been using this Tascam DR10L Pro since August 2nd. And when I first got it, I do what I do, and I put out a little Instagram reel, and I got a bunch of DMs and messages saying, oh, those things are great. I've been using those for years. And I was like, oh, no, no, you haven't been using this one for years. These may look a lot like the older gen, but the cool part about these is they now have 32-bit float. That was the whole reason I bought this bad boy, just mainly for my Patreon videos, because I'm quite lazy when I do those, and I don't like to set up my big Sennheiser MKH-16 with my Sound Devices Mix Pre-3. So because of that, I just wanted something a little better because for the past three years, I've been using this Hollyland Lark 150. I did put out a review video on that, but I got a very poor response just because I don't know why. Uh, but if anyone's interested in that one, it's kind of funny. We do like a little funny sketch. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. But the reason why I'm wearing two is because when GVM, great video makers, sent me their 650B, which is an awesome light. So if you missed that review, again, another one I'll put in the link in the description below. Uh, they sent it to me. I didn't really know anything about it. I could care less. I had no desire to review it, but since I already had it, since I already had the task cam since August 2nd, I thought, cool, yeah, I'll uh, test it out and we can just see. So this is very similar to the Hollyland Lark or the Rhodes, or you'll notice the size of the little receivers is very small. They look very similar to the DJI ones. Um, the coolest part about these is the little transmitter, which I have attached to the top of the camera right now. You are listening to the GVM right now. And the coolest part about it is the transmitter has a built-in eight gigabyte of memory. So that's pretty cool. Uh, however, these GVMs have a lot of cons, but we'll save all the cons for the end of each of these items because I have things to complain about each of them, as you all know. I'm not big into audio. I could really care less. The only reason why I have the big my big expensive Sennheiser MKH416 and the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 is not only for my YouTube talking heads, but also for my corporate and documentary clients where I do talking heads. The only time I do audio for clients is when it's just one talking head. If it gets anything more bizarre than that, I always just bring in an audio guy and I have a nice little short list of guys that I like to use. So without further ado, let's get out there and deal with this horrendous construction that's been going on for a year next to us. And uh, we can test out the low cut filters and the 32 bit float of these microphones. Keep in mind the GVM is only 16 bit. So there's construction going on next door. The low cut filter is on both the GVM and the task cam. This is the low cut filter with the task cam. We get uh, different frequencies of low cut that we have access to, which is nice. Um, I usually keep it on 80. Now we will jump to the GVM. This is the GVM with its uh, just one option of low cut. My experience of messing around with these GVMs is the low cut filter wasn't that great. Sounded like we had a near accident right there back behind us. That's a notorious intersection. They just, you know, the city refuses to put a stop sign there. So my car got totaled there at about 1.30 in the morning. So that was cool. And that happened last summer when I was away. I was on a travel job. I was the gaffer on a feature length documentary and uh, got a phone call in the morning I woke up to uh, that my car had been totaled by a drunk driver. <laughs> That's okay, we got a new one. For instance, the Tascam DR10L Pro gives us four different options for low cut filter, whereas the GVM is just one kind of just one option. We're not sure, I'm not sure what the frequency is of that. So this is the GVM manual, and I think it's important to note what's going on with the GVM low cut filter. As you'll see here, it says 2.4G wireless transmission, stable signal, low distortion, low delay, highly realistic reproduction of human voice. This part is important to note. Intelligent noise reduction algorithm, which can meet the sound pickup requirements of any complex environment. So there's clearly some sort of AI going on with this GVM low cut filter. That's why it sounds like a really bad version of what DaVinci Resolve offers in terms of voice isolation. The downside with the GVM is it maxes out at 16 bit. So you're not even gonna get 24 bit out of the GVM. 
you're going to get nowhere near as close to quality what you would get with the Tascam being 32-bit float. Now, for the time being, I've switched back to the Tascam DR10L Pro. We're still on with the low-cut filter applied uh, at 80 hertz low-cut. Um, you get an idea of what that sounds like. I'll jump back to the GVM now. So now we're back onto the GVM. So I hear them picking up over there and hopefully we can get some more saw action. So I'd love to see, but at least you're seeing the difference of the low cut filters here. Now we got our saw firing up out there. So here you'll be able to see, um, good, it's going good now. We're on the GVM here, testing out this low cut filter, me talking with the loud saw in the background. That's the GVM. Let's jump back to the task cam. Now we're back on the task cam, loud noises in the background, me talking, talking to you with the task cam DR. Let's jump back to the GVM. Now we're on the GVM, low cut filter applied. And uh, yeah, we'll get some good levels out of this now. And you get a pretty decent idea of the difference of the low cut filters with noises in the background and without. Now we'll jump back to the task cam. Now we're on the task cam with the low cut filter applied. We'll be able to see like, are any of these giving us like a weird tin can noise? Uh, that's, the, that's my biggest complaint with a lot of like cheaper audio products. Give you, it sounds like you're talking through a tin can. Let's jump back to the GVM now. Does the GVM sound like you're, you're talking in a tin can? Like you're in some sort of Bart, Bart Simpson episode and you're in, up in the tree fort talking back and forth, if you understand what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, this is the difference between the low cut filters on each microphone. The GVM, keep in mind also, the GVM does not come with a lapel mic. So you would need your own lapel mics to plug into the GVM receiver unit. It's getting really nice and loud now. We got a plane coming in, so we'll stay on the GVM for this. It's like a plane or a chopper up there uh, with the low cut filter applied here. Let's jump back to the task cam now. Now we're on the task cam and uh, we'll just see how this is all sounding with the low cut filter applied here. Something really cool too is something I've been doing uh, in DaVinci Resolve. They have an open FX plugin the noise isolator and it's really really awesome i used it on my video where i was documenting the the first week of the writer strike here in la and uh, i'll leave a link to that video down below so you can get an idea of how i you know because out there i was just using a little sony hand recorder i don't think there's any low cut filter with that little sony hand recorder but it did awesome and you're talking about there are horns going on it was the first week of the strike it was insane we were right next to the road out there on sunset boulevard Let's jump back to the GVM now. So now this is the last thing we're gonna do before we move on. So this is the GVM with the low cut filter applied. We've got a lot of nice noises going on. Um, just get you know, a pretty good idea of those low cut filters. Yeah, I don't think anything will be able to save you from this. <laughs> so this is like the extreme example. I understand that. This is a very extreme example. Let's jump back to the task cam now. Okay, so again, very extreme example. And uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so now we are going to compare the 32-bit float of the Tascam DR10L Pro versus the 16-bit of the little GVM. Hey! Get over there! Get down! Versus the 16-bit of the little GVM. Hey! Get over there! Get down! All right, so now we can analyze that. All right, I do have some cons about the Tascam DR10L Pro. As much as I love this microphone, uh, I guess it's like a microphone field recorder combo. Uh, it does come with the little lapel mic. It's a nice locking lapel. It's a good little Tascam lav mic. There's no doubt about that. And it has a kind of okay little slim belt loop clip. However, it's not like super sturdy. It has fallen off of my shorts a couple times just in the like past three or four weeks that I've been using this thing, it did go crashing to the ground at least once. So I don't know about the, the like the reliability of this belt loop clamp. Um, I just, after that happened, now I just put it all the way into my pocket. Um, beyond that, the, the real qualms I have with it is, you know, as cool as the Bluetooth adapter is, the whole reason I bought it is because I thought I would be able to monitor the audio with my ears with the app. And that's not really what it's for. You just get to visually watch uh, the waveform monitor with your eyeballs, but there's no way to listen to the audio. That's a bummer. You can't really monitor audio other than just looking at a waveform, which I guess is okay. But I guess the upside is it, is it, it does have that 32-bit float. So you have that extra security of being like, okay, it's, it's not going to like you know, clip out, um, and it has wonderful built-in limiters. 
you know, the sound quality of this thing has come a long ways. I, I do praise it for that. But had I known that you couldn't monitor the audio through the app, I would have probably just not gotten the Bluetooth adapter. I don't really care about time code. My opinion is uh, if anytime I shoot a narrative feature and you all know that I mainly live in the narrative world or you know, even commercials, I consider the commercials that I do very narrative because they are narrative, they have nice scripted uh, dialogue and things like that. I don't really rely on audio units like this, like the audio guys I even hire, they don't use things like this. They use things that they can actually monitor the audio with. There's no real way to monitor the audio with this. That's why I feel like this is more geared towards YouTubers, vloggers, wedding videographers, uh, guys doing um, live event conferences, corporate guys, yeah. But in the world of narrative, these would never fly. Like I w I've always been told since the days of film school, if what's the point of having audio if you can't monitor it? It's the same as, pissing in the wind and it's just going to come back all over you, right? So it's kind of pointless, right? So these are more like, you know, geared for um, people where there's not a whole lot on the line where that dialogue isn't as important. Filmmaking world, narrative world, commercial world, there's a lot more people involved, clients, real producers and things, and uh, they're going to want to know that that audio is being captured. Sometimes they like to listen to it themselves and you're not going to be able to do that with something like this. With that being said, there is a, uh, the Bluetooth adapter does allow for time code if you have like that Atomos cable or something but again, there's no security of being able to monitor the audio. There is a headphone jack on the actual recorder. However, it's crap. Mine is so bad, so bad that I thought it was a mono headphone jack because you know you have to jiggle it and wiggle it and I've tried it with multiple earbuds I've even tried it with my $300 Beats headphones it's crap it, it, it you know and I contemplated sending it back but the fact like you can still like wiggle it and jiggle it and pull it halfway out and you can hear the audio just to test it and have someone test and then drop it in their pocket and walk away I thought well you know you know eh, and what I didn't want to you know I already waited uh, quite a number of weeks to get this because I was on the pre-order sale so I just said I don't want to deal with sending it back it's not that important um, you know because it's just a headphone jack on the unit it does work it's just not the greatest and I read other reviews of this specific unit the DR10L Pro I watched Curtis Judd I always go to Curtis Judd for he is like the champ of audio and he even said too that this is definitely this unit's weakest link is the headphone port and also keep in mind uh, I don't know if it's worth it to pay for the Bluetooth adapter the only cool thing is, is you will be able to use your phone or your iPad as a remote control. So maybe if you are a wedding videographer and you got like three or four of these out and about, you can pull all of them up on the app if you actually get it to connect. Now, good luck there. Now, when I first got this thing, like the first day right out of the box, I guess I got lucky. The app connected immediately to my iPad. However, I haven't had the greatest of luck getting it to connect to my phone. Now that I said that out loud, I had some flashbacks of when I first got the Red Komodo. It might have something to do with my cellular service because I know with the Red Komodo, when the Red Komodo control is giving me issues on my phone, I have to turn my cellular service off and then the Red Komodo control app works flawlessly. So maybe that's why the Taskcam app works so good with my iPad because my iPad does not have actual cellular service. It has Wi-Fi but not cellular service. So maybe that's why it works much better with the iPad because cellular service does interfere with some of these apps. I'll almost put money on it. That's why my phone has such a hard time connecting. With that being said, that's a bit of a problem. I still don't like the idea of turning the cellular service all the way off because imagine if you're working, you leave, someone like me, my brain is going a mile a minute when I'm on a job, your adrenaline is going high. I'm not going to remember to turn my cellular service back on when the job is done, right? So, you know, just those are things to think about. So I hope Taskcam gets back to the drawing board on that app. It is kind of cool that you can use the app as a little wireless remote to stop recording and start recording. But again, for someone like me, I was kind of disappointed. I don't know if it's worth it to get the Bluetooth adapter. Honestly, that's just my opinion. The recorder itself is awesome. Again, you have four different options for low cut filter. You've got the 32-bit float option. It's got some nice limiters. You can do auto level or you can set your own levels. It's a cool little thing. And I've been really pleased with the actual quality of the audio. So I guess that's really all that matters at the end of the day. Now let's get on to these GVMs. Clearly they ripped off the design of DJI's. When I saw DJI's little microphones, the GVMs look just like it. Let's be real here. I do like how smaller these things are getting, uh, especially, you know, compared to like, 
like the old roads or you know like the Hollyland Lark 150 and I know some guys are probably like why isn't he reviewing the new road thing well because road didn't send me their shit and I don't ask any company for their shit uh, this is just what this these guys they they sent this with the GVM light I had no desire to do this I was happy with my new task cam to be honest but the fact that I already had this I thought well let's throw this into the mix because in my experience of using these for a minute now and I'm sure you heard it with the field test the limiter on these is kind of crap let's be honest it sounds pretty bad but i guess if you need it in a pinch you have it i think the only nice part about these little gvm microphones is that built-in eight gigabytes of memory that's pretty cool however keep in mind if it fills up it'll just it'll just turn over and start recording over so and there's no way to monitor it you know you, you just don't know you don't know how much the cards filling up you have no way to know the only way you even know that it's even recording is the light will turn green on the actual transmitter so there's nothing that comes up on the oled screen nothing so that is a huge bummer almost an oversight to me it was like why even put the eight gigabytes of memory in the transmitter at all if there's no way to actually see what the hell's going on with it uh that to me was a little disturbing um it's cool that it's there i guess but i think it's a little bit of an oversight oversight they should have like focused to at least show us something on the oled screen of the transmitter these do not come with lapel mic so you will have to get your own but there is a jack on each little uh, receiver for a lapel mic you saw out there in the field test you can put the little fuzzies on here we don't need to talk about that yeah the record button is on the receiver so that's interesting as well um, the recharge case it can recharge all three units the transmitter both receivers in one and a half hours and Oh, let's talk about that battery life because Tascam claims that the DR10L Pro will last you 16 hours. I don't buy that, not for a minute. Now I use energizers, rechargeable AAA batteries because this does power off of two AAA batteries. So I guess it also, the battery life comes down to really what brand, what kind of uh, AAA batteries you decide to use. Also, you know, if you're like me and you're using rechargeable batteries, how many cycles have they gone through? You know, so, you know, I, I don't really care about testing it out. I mean, 16 hours. Uh, the reason why I say I don't know if I trust it is because after a couple hours, one little notch of the battery logo went down and I'm like, really? 16 hours and two hours? It already, you know, dropped a, a, a quarter. You know, it's like, I don't know if it's 16 hours. But again, I don't know. You know, I'm using rechargeable Energizer AAAs. Granted, they are brand new rechargeable AAAs. They haven't gone through a whole lot of cycles. Um, so I don't know if I buy that 16 hour record time. And that's with 32-bit flow. That's from the Tascam manual. I just don't believe it. I don't buy it. Here's another downside. The Tascam doesn't give us a percentage readout of the battery. It just gives us that old school little crappy battery logo with four bars. It's like, eh, I hate that when, when companies do that. But the fact that it dropped a quarter uh, of battery only after a couple hours of use, so what that tells me is like maybe eight hours if you're lucky so half of what Tascam is predicting uh i don't know but again i think it boils down maybe if you bought the top of the line you know 40 dollar triple a batteries whatever those are now on the gvm side their battery life uh, record time is only five hours so keep that in mind standby time they claim you can get from seven to ten hours but who's using them in standby right? let's talk about record time right is that... so uh, but now here's the thing i don't know if they mean recording directly to the transmitter they don't really specify that in the manual. The range of these is supposed to be 100 meters, so that's pretty remarkable. What I think is most horrendous about the GVM mics is it has a 20 millisecond latency. So that is pretty insane, a 20 millisecond latency. Uh, if you're doing a really long interview, that's going to get crazy because if you notice like that that happens in long interviews over time, it, it starts getting worse and worse. Uh, 20 milliseconds? I think that's pretty severe in my opinion. But right now, since it's dead quiet, I have both mics linked up and they are rolling. Now, keep in mind the GVM is plugged directly into the Sony A7S III, so you are hearing the, um, you know, like the preamps of the A7S III. What I think I will do is I'm going to record and we can hear what the preamps of the of, it has to have some kind of preamps, the, the actual GVM transmitter, otherwise it wouldn't be able to record. So I do want to test that out. There you saw the light turned green, so we know now that it's recording. Something else to consider about these GVMs, you know, keep in mind, you could, like, here's where I think, like, if you were really balling on a budget and you wanted to do some narrative thing and you, where you actually wanted to monitor the audio, if you had some extra money, 
Sound Devices Mix Pre 3. Okay, this is what I have been using for my YouTube since, I mean, I got this around the same time I got the Red Komodo. So I've been using this for three years for my YouTube talking heads. I use this, uh, now keep in mind, I use this in conjunction with a friggin, you know, almost $2,000 Sennheiser boom mic, the MKH416 or something like that. I don't even think they make that one anymore, the one specific one that I have. But um, this, you know, technically you could plug the GVM transmitter into this and take advantage of the sound device's 32-bit float and be able to monitor this. And I always recommend the sound devices because they have the cashmere preamps and they have the 32-bit float. Uh, these are always going to be the most optimal results. However, these need power. So I always power these with a Nano V-mount using USB-C. It just gets quite, uh, you know, a big setup. This is like something that goes in a little sound bag, you know, so uh, th that's if you're doing like on-site field recording or something like that. I don't know about what to tell you guys. I hope you found this video a little beneficial. I don't know. I, I don't even think anybody knows about these GVM microphones. They're very, very cheap. I mean, I guess if it's all you could get, then it's what you could get. I do think that because these are newer than the Hollyland Lark 150s, and because they have that built-in eight gigabytes of memory, I do think it is a better buy nowadays to get these instead of the three-year-old Hollyland Lark 150s. I do think that. I don't know how well they compete against the newer Rode mics that just dropped that everyone's going gung hung about. Again, I'm not a big microphone dude. When I do sit down talking heads, I use my big setup, like I already mentioned earlier. I just wanted the task cam because it had that 32-bit float. I've been doing more like street photography vlogs, as most of you know, and I just, um, I just wanted something a little better for that uh, sound quality. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Gotta give a big up to this month's Patreon producer, Akula Productions. For now, that is a wrap. No, you have to think about what camera is looking at. Oh, okay. Right? And then Tristan's going to come in and block that anyway. So there's okay. no sense in doing a bunch of work if it's... Yeah. All right. So Tristan, let's get your head back where you were. Right here. You can lean in a little bit more. <laughs>